Uh, shalom to everyone out there. Again, my name is Damian Powell. Thank you for joining me for Yeshua Saves All. Uh, very important topic today titled Burn Your Satanic Music ASAP. A lot of people think that listening to music is just something simple and it's good fun, but it goes way deeper than that. Uh, Satan has many devices and techniques that he, that he uses, and we must be on guard for all his devices, okay? And as we know, I'm here to expose the darkness with the light of our Messiah, Yeshua. He is salvation, the Son of Yahweh, the Father. So with that said, Burn your satanic music ASAP, okay? There's a rapper, and somebody told me about him a little while ago. I didn't know anything about him because I personally haven't listened to any secular music, which is music that doesn't worship our Father Yahweh and Yeshua. This commercialized music that the world listens to. And trust me, this has been going on for a long time. And so this guy's name is Lil Uzi. And so I did some research on him, and he's openly on stage saying, and nobody flying up to heaven right now. Obviously, all y'all bleeps going to hell with me, Lil Uzi said. When it began to play, Uzi continues to tell them that they are in hell and will remain there. Oh, you already here, he added. I'm so sorry. You can't get out. You're stuck. It's over. You heard the song a million times, and you didn't even know. That's bleep. Up, oh, but I still love you anyway. And on his Instagram page, he posted all these upside-down cross images and wearing satanic symbols. He openly told his listeners that if you listen to his music, that you would join him in torment and hell. Yet, it doesn't stop anybody from buying his music or listening to his music. He said you heard it a million times and you're going to where he knows he's headed since he's led so many leading so many people astray. Music is not innocent. It is a tool of Satan. And there are many um, hidden messages, subliminal messages, and all these things that are written and said within music. And as we know, you are not to grieve the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kakodesh, dwells within you. And when you are feeding it, this garbage that Satan has given, then we are grieving the Holy Spirit. So I don't want anybody, uh, I'm, I'm not saying all music is, all I'm saying is be on guard because there is some music that's out there about uh, maybe your wife or something like that. But we, let's be honest. Most music out there and most music that people listen to, which is what this broadcast is about, is satanic music and it, and, it, and it promotes fornication and adultery and all those other things. Most people in this world are not listening to uh, spiritual music. Let's just be honest with it. All right. Uh, with that said, I want to show uh, a video real quick. And the reason why I want to show this, and if you're sensitive to it, then, 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 then turn or skip past this part, but I have to show this to show, to show the severity of this situation here. And this is from um, Watchman Yah Yahoo's broadcast where he was doing one about the uh, musical prophets on, uh, on Prince. So I, 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 I show this video to show that this has been going on since the 60s and 70s. So if this was going on in Prince's day, than imagine what's going on today, 2019, where uh, the technology is way more advanced than it was in his time. And in order to hear the subliminal message, of course, you have to play it in reverse because Satan perverts everything. He reverses everything and flips it on his head. So you're listening to a song and you think that is innocent, but you don't know the hidden message within it until it's played in reverse. Okay, so here's an example right here. Oh, see. 
surgery about a woman's body. Okay, body so anybody that's a believer in Yahweh and a follower of Yeshua, that is that is, that should be disturbing to you. Very disturbing to you. I remember the first time I watched it. I, I'm not gonna lie to anybody. I was in tears because I realized how deceived this world is. And and I, I have I know we all have people that listen to his music or still know somebody that's listening to that music and that's the stuff that you're feeding your soul. And I think it's disgusting. I think it's scary. And that everybody should stop today. Repent. Repent to Yahweh, Yeshua. And let's get this right, okay? Now, I'm going to play um, another one real quick uh, with Prince again from the same the same um, broadcast that he did, his documentary on Prince, okay? Very disturbing, that's all I can say. Number one, that song had to be replayed and reversed as well for you to hear that message. And um, he says that the Lord is coming soon, okay? And we know that he's not talking about the Messiah, Yeshua, because did you hear that dark demonic laugh that followed with what he said, okay? And when you study Hebrew, you'll know that the Lord means Baal or Baal in Hebrew, okay? In scripture, in Hebrew, uh, Yeshua was called Adon, which means master, or Adonai, which means my master. Lord is one of the English words that's used, which means you're saying Baal or Baal in Hebrew when you say Lord. That's for another broadcast, but I want people to be aware. He's saying the Lord is coming soon. He's talking about the anti-Messiah. I just want to make, make that clear. And you heard the demonic laugh that went, went right along with it, okay? Nothing good. And that's the stuff that you're feeding your soul without you knowing it because your ear can't hear it. It has to be played in reverse, and that's what you're feeding your soul. We must repent to our Father Yahweh and Yeshua today. Burn your satanic music ASAP, okay? And I just read that quote, and there's a video for that about Lil Uzi and him being on stage saying that. You can look it up. This is all real, okay? These guys are obviously an agent for Satan. You can tell that they sold their soul for fame and fortune, and they're openly telling you who they serve. They know the spiritual power that is in music and what it and the uh, power that music possesses, and they know that the listeners will join them in torture if they continue to listen to it. Okay, it's just one example of what goes on in this music industry today. But now we understand the importance of what Yahweh says: "Touch no unclean thing; I will receive you." Okay, He also says, "Be." Holy, for I am holy. Be Kodesh, for I am Kodesh. That means, holy means set apart. You are set apart from the rest of this world. The whole world loves music. Music is entertaining. It's captivating, okay? But the whole world is listening to this secular music, okay? And there's nothing that you are doing that you are setting yourself apart by listening to this stuff, okay? There's nothing good that can come of it. We all want to walk with our Messiah, Yeshua, as believers, but we are unknowingly, or the world is unknowingly, falling to Satan's snare, okay? He's diverting our attention attention through the entertainment world, through music and movies. 
this goes deeper than the natural eye or the area that you can, um, like I was saying about the subliminal messages, it goes deeper than that. And like I said, Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers and darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses and high places. This is real. Okay, the spiritual world is more real than the air that we breathe. It's time that we stand up and realize this is not innocent. Behind the scenes of music is a dark force that has taken the world captive. And we have been duped into thinking that music is just innocent beat with innocent lyrics and that we are just having a good time. Okay, how could it be wrong, the world says. However, behind the scenes is a product a producer, I'm sorry, an engineer crafting and inspiring most of the world. And his name is Satan the Devil. Okay, if you read the book of Enoch, which is for another broadcast, his name is God Real. God Real. An ex Illuminatus spoke out before going into hiding. In an interview, there's a guy named John Todd who is now deceased. He got out of the Illuminati and went into hiding. But before he passed away, he exposed the music industry. He stated that he was high up in the Illuminati and that he owned all of the major record companies in the world. He said that after an album is recorded, they would take the CD behind closed doors and place it on an altar. They would then summon demons to follow the album wherever they went. So when you, when you own the CD, you have purchased a demon free of charge. You have just given demons legal right to enter into your home, even if you don't listen to it. Even if it's just sitting there in your room, on the counter, on the shelf, on the table, they have summoned a demon to go wherever that CD goes. You see the deception there. Satan looks for an entrance into your life, and he has chosen to use music as a tool because everybody loves it. The demons are wreaking havoc in your life, and people can't figure out the source of their problems. And I encourage every believer to pray to our Elohim of Israel to, the scrub, to discover the root of your sickness, depressions, marriages, and other things. You know, it, it, it goes deeper than the food that we eat that they're tr trying to poison us with. We're trying to get you through your entertainment. Okay. Now, what classifies as secular music? Any song that does not exalt, worship, or praise Yahweh and His Son Yeshua is an abomination because all music was created to worship our Elohim. Secular music, which is music that is not created to worship Elohim, keeps us being friends of the world, okay? And it, ke it keeps feeding our fleshly and lustly desires, okay? We as believers live in this world, but we're not supposed to be a part of this world. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy to Elohim? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. Now, any follower of Yeshua does not want to be an enemy of Elohim. So take, your, take yourself out of this equation and burn this satanic music. Okay. Though the devil's cunning tactic, well, some excuse me, through the devil's cunning tactics, he keeps us in the world by promoting idolatry, vanity, devil worship, lawlessness, drugs, incest, drunkenness, adultery, greed, fornication, being rich, and violence. Yet we turn up the volume and nod our heads. And repeat the lyrics that come out of the artist's mouths as if we are in agreement with what they are saying. It's like you are entering into a uh, a contract, so to speak, with them. Because you are agreeing with, with the words that are coming out of their mouth. You're repeating it. Our words are powerful. Yahweh and Yeshua 
spoke the world into ex existence with words. He told Yahweh told Moses to speak to the rock so that water would gush out of the rock. Okay, although Moses chose to strike the rock, he was showing the power of words. Words are powerful. So when you repeat these words, they don't just disappear. So when you were repeating these rap songs and these R&B songs and rock and roll songs with these hidden messages and a fornication, you are agreeing with it. All of these things keep us in the world, making us enemies with Elohim. And we are feeding our souls with wickedness. Okay? You are grieving the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Wickedness is when you choose to go your own way and do your own will instead of going the way of Yahweh, okay? And go, you go your own way and not his way. Wickedness is calling light darkness and darkness light. When we know that the two don't mix. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. And you are not able to drink the cup of Elohim and the cup of demons. You are not able to partake of the table of the master and the table of demons, okay? Too often times, people want to have one foot with Yahweh and his son Yeshua and one foot in the world. You can't do both. You cannot do it. That means that you are trying to sit at the table of Elohim and sip the cup of demons at the same time. You can't do it. You're either for him or against him. We must choose what side we're going to be on because scripture tells us that you cannot serve both. You are either a child of Elohim or an enemy of his. And trust me, you don't want to be an enemy of his because Yahweh even, Yahweh even says himself uh, in the book of Amos, he says, why do you call out for the day of Yahweh? Do you not know that the day of Yahweh is going to be a day of darkness and not light? A day known only to Yahweh, where well, the sun will not give us light, the moon will be turned to darkness, and the stars won't give us its brightness, and they'll fall from the sky. It's going to be a day of darkness. So don't be an enemy of Yahweh, okay? Whenever we go into grocery stores, department stores, the person in the cars next to you blasting the music, music is everywhere, and the world loves music especially secular music, because it's designed to be that way. There is nothing holy, Kodesh, about it. And remember, Yahweh says in Leviticus 19.2, as I said before, be holy for I am holy. Listening to this type of music does not set a believer apart from a non-believer. Again, listening to this music does not separate a believer from a non-believer. The world has self-assimilated. And that means that we have become like the nations around of us. Instead of being a holy set apart nation, which Yahweh has called Israel to be, we have conformed to the nations around us and want to be just like them. So now we look just like them, like the rest of the world. Not so. We're not supposed to be that way. Is music a form of idol worship? Well, let me explain it to you like this. Like this. When we exalt the musicians by following them to the point that they become bigger than life to us, in return, people will lose sight of Yahweh. They even made a show called American What? Idol. Because they know that the world is looking for the next biggest artist that will be indirectly worshipped by the fans as idols. Okay. We follow these musicians, we know their life story, we buy the music, their posters, their clothing lines, support their clubs, their restaurants. We know more about a human artist than we know about our Messiah Yeshua. Do you see the deception? Okay. Now, like I said, you have American Idol. And what does Yahweh say in the Ten Commandments? It says, now have no other Elohim before me. Have no other God before me. Okay. So you are indirectly doing that, okay? You don't have to physically bow down to something to make it your Elohim, your God. That's one thing I want to explain and show people. There's such thing as called a spiritual idolatry. And boy, it's very prevalent today. What does scripture say about idols outside of what I just explained? Colossians 3, 5 through 6. 
Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, whoring, uncleanliness, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, greed of gain, which is idolatry. Because these, because these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedient. So as you can see, idolatry is also uh, classified as whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, greed of gain, which is idolatry. And music promotes all the above the same way as the movie industry does, promotes all the above. Isn't that the same description that I used to show how Satan promotes all of these unholy things in secular music? Okay. Have no other Elohim before me, says Yahweh. But yet, you are indirectly putting a musician over him. I've seen people claim, no, I've seen people claim that they have no money to help the poor. They would drive by the poor, yet they have enough money to go buy tickets to a concert to go see their favorite artist or to buy, spend the last dollar to buy that CD that's coming out or to get that next pair of Jordans. This is all part of Satan's plan to distract you and make you praise another. Scripture tells us that apostasy of the church must occur before the anti-Messiah comes. That means that people will renounce faith and our Messiah Yeshua, the son of Yahweh. And Satan must accomplish this by making us become immune to sin through music and movies. Believers in Yeshua are doing this without even knowing it. Okay? Right in your face. For example, that demonic show, Lucifer. A show about himself. He's become so bold now that he says, hey... I can make a show about myself, and even believers are going to watch it. Nobody's going to know what sin is anymore. And then it'll be his time to step, step onto the scene. And a scripture says two-thirds of the earth will be destroyed, or two-thirds be cut off and thrown into the fire, but that's for another broadcast. So does music really have this effect on believers? Is music really that important? I know that's Probably what's going through your head right now. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, yes. Jimi Hendrix and a few other popular musicians gave credit to the power of voodoo for the rhythm of the beat that puts you into a trance and captivates you. So, like I said, when you, I wish I, wish I could have gra uh, gotten that video, but... It's pretty much when you boom, 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 you know, it, it, gets you, it gets you moving. It gets you moving, and the next thing you know, you're in a trance. And like I said, they credited that to the power of voodoo. Uh, there's like an alpha and a beta state, um, something like that, that I'll be getting to on another broadcast, Elohim willing, where they want to lower that. They want to lower your state, so it allows for a demonic possession and demonic spirits to come in. So the beat is going to get you as well. All right, so how is this possible? How is this possible, people want to know? Well, the book of Ezekiel hints that Satan plays music in heaven and the Shamayim. Therefore, it's no secret that he is in charge of the music industry. Okay, Ezekiel 28, 13. You were in the Garden of Eden, okay, of Elohim. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the gold, the worksmanship of the timbrels, the timbrels, and of thy pipes was prepared for you in the day you were created. This would it would explain why music captures the world so much, because he was the chief musician in heaven. Okay, and the beat and the lyrics that we know so well he uses to lure people away from Yahweh. Now listen to this. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16 to 23 says, Please let our master command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who was a skilled player on the lyre. And it shall be that when the evil spirit of Elohim is upon you, talking about Saul, when he disobeyed Yahweh's command, that he shall play with his hand and you will be well. And Saul said to his servants, please 
Give me a man that plays well and bring him to me. And one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen the son of Jesse of a of, of, of Baeth Lehemite who knows how to play, a brave one, a man of battle and skilled in words and a handsome man and Yahweh is with him. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. And David came to Saul and stood, be and stood before him and he loved them greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Saul therefore sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me for he has found favor in my eyes. And it came to be whenever the spirit of Elohim was upon Saul that David would take a lyre and play it with his hand. And then Saul would become refreshed and well and the evil spirit would leave him. Second Kings chapter three, verse 17. And now bring me a harpist. And it came to be when the harpist played that the hand of Yahweh came upon him. And he said, thus said Yahweh, make this wadi ditches. As we see, David, a righteous man, played music to cast out an evil spirit. So can't Satan inspired music be used to invite demonic spirits into your life? Also, when music was played, the spirit of Yahweh came upon Elisha, the prophet that succeeded Elijah, who was taken into heaven, and Elijah was able to prophesy. So you can see the power of music. Music was played to get rid of an evil spirit. So if music was played to get rid of an evil spirit, can't Satan reverse that and put an evil spirit into you through his music? Think about that. What's the goal of Satan? What's his goal? Through Satan, the artist or singer that has sold his soul to him becomes his false preacher. Using the stage as his pulpit, giving his false doctrine to the, to the audience of believers and non-believers and lost souls. The artist is a pawn used by Satan to deliver the message because Satan knows that the world won't directly bow down and worship him. Okay, through his deceptive tactics, like music, he soaks up the glory, the adoration, the praise that the artist gets. Satan wants to destroy us, so he does his best to pull glory away from Elohim, making us enemies to our creator. Satan is not your friend. Okay. The term worship itself means reverence or adoration, honor or praise to Elohim, okay? We all know that these celebrities receive adoration from the fans all over the world, which is a form of idolatry or worship. And as I stated, Satan is standing behind the artist and he is soaking up all the worship because he knows that they sold the soul and pledged allegiance to him. He does everything in reverse of our father, Yahweh. As I stated before, Yahweh has Shabbats, okay? He has the weekly seven-day Shabbat from Friday night sunset to Saturday night sunset. And he has his appointed times found in Leviticus 23, which is also called Moedim or Shabbats. And Satan has his Sabbaths. He just took the H off. Satan makes musicians say Yahweh's prayer that Yeshua taught, which is called the Lord's Prayer, backwards. He puts subliminal messages into, messages into the music, but you have to play it backwards, as I showed with the Prince song, okay? Yahweh says don't sacrifice your children, yet Satan requires human sacrifices. Why does Satan get music? Think about this. Why does Satan get musicians to sign their name and blood on the contracts. Because Yahweh says that the life is in the blood, which is why he says do not eat the blood of an animal because he says that the life is in the blood. So Satan gets the musicians to sign their name and blood on the contracts because he knows that the life is in the blood. Therefore, you are entering into a spiritual contract with Satan. Okay? Think about that.
Your life is in the blood and your blood has not been signed on a contract, which is why they say you sell your soul to Satan when you do such a thing. Can you sell your soul, people ask? Well, Matthew 4, 9 says, The devil took Yeshua to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I would give to you, he said, if you would bow down and worship me. If Satan made that offer to Yeshua, our Messiah, our Savior, the Son of Yahweh, then he can make that offer to any one of us. Okay. If he made the offer to the son of Yahweh, he can make it to you, okay? And he promised him to give him the, everything, all the kingdoms of the earth because Satan has the right to do so because he's the Elohim God of this earth. He will stop at nothing to get glory and the worship at the expense of our souls, Okay? Think about that. If he offered that to the son of Yahweh, our, our Messiah and Savior, he can offer it to you. And a lot of people take him up on that offer. People are not thinking about the end times and what's coming. Okay. First Kings uh, 21 through 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sides of Yahweh. Okay. Ahab committed many abominations before this by walking in the sins of Jeroboam, by doing more evil than he did by making statues of Baal and Ashtaroth and bowing down for bowing down to them. This account is found in 1 Kings chapter 16, 31 through 33. Many artists, okay, do not take Yeshua's approach to rebuke Satan. They will take his offer for fame and fortune. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, Lil Wayne uh, had a decision when he summoned up a, de a demon named Murmur. Okay. He also has a shirt that says, Yeshua saves, I spin. Except it has Jesus saves on it. Yeshua saves, I spin. Now think about that. He's saying that he does the exact opposite of what Yeshua does. If Yeshua saves souls and Lil Wayne says he spins, then that means that he destroys souls. If Yeshua saves, then he destroys. You see what I'm saying? That's a deception. So people are wearing the shirt saying, well, you know, it's talking about the Messiah. No, it's not. He's openly telling you what he's doing. The shirt has a cross with a dollar sign wrapping around it, okay, which is symbolic of Satan wrapping around the tree as he was speaking to Eve to deceive her, okay? That's a deception tool to make you think that it's about Yeshua when it's not. He also makes it a point to call himself an alien or a Martian because he's simply saying that he is a demon and pledges his allegiance to the devil, and he said that he's an alien or a Martian because you have to understand that Genesis chapter 6 explains about how the fallen angels went into the daughters of men. Okay, and Nephilim walked the earth that day on. Okay, and so, you know, people are, are, are like, like, like videos and people have been saying before, they look like us, but they're not us. They're claiming that they're Martians and things like that, but a Martian is just another word for a demon, okay? Sadly, there's an article written by a woman, a girl named Tiffany Washer, named Lil Wayne's Secret, and it discusses a song that Lil Wayne released earlier in his career called I Feel Like Dying. In the article, it says that Lil Wayne made a pact with a demon named Murmur shortly before his popularity exploded. Producers Cool and Dre worked with Lil Wayne on a few tracks when he became a big time star. But the, the producer Cool says that the real producers of that song were demons and they told Lil Wayne to recruit other members. So he did. And later on, his group became Young Money. The Young Money was formed to complete the deal. He made a pact with Murmur in exchange for his soul. He was allowed, the demon was allowed to possess Lil Wayne for a short period of time and will make him one of the most popular rappers alive, which Lil Wayne became. 
when the song was recorded, it wasn't Lil Wayne rapping, it was Murmur, and his demons were the producers. That's pretty scary. Now, you can look up the, um, some videos on YouTube about uh, Lil Wayne being possessed on stage, at, on live on stage. I'm not going to pull that video up. But you can look it up for yourself. He's wearing uh, gold gold fatigue pants. And as he's walking, he's speaking on the microphone. And the guy freezes the camera. You can see that his eyes turn the same color as his pants. They're an orange color. Okay. Johnny Depp, though he's an actor, he, should, he, he is a known drinking problem. Where I think the report said he spends about $20,000 a month in alcohol. It was also stated that he can't stand to watch his own movies because that is not him on film. A demonic spirit enters him before he acts, which would explain why he plays in all these weird dark movies like Sweeney Todd and Edward Scissorhands. Think about that for a second. And personally, I think the alcohol problem extends from the fact that he is seeing demons and knows what is dwelling within him which is why he can't stand to watch his own movies and has to drink alcohol because he knows what's going on within them. John Goodman also stated that he can't look at himself either, another actor. And Michael Jackson, I grew up listening to Michael Jackson's like the rest of the world. The guy made great music. He captivated the entire world. He crossed over and had many fans. But my personal opinion on Michael Jackson is that the reason why he couldn't sleep is that he was seeing demons at night, okay, that would probably torture them in ways that we can't even fathom, and therefore he couldn't sleep. We know that Satan has come. He's coming to collect his soul or anybody's soul that has sold their soul to him. And I personally think that's why he, was, he needed uh, sleep and treatment in order to fall asleep. And I did want to show this about uh, Michael Jackson really quick. This was the um, the album cover for uh, Dangerous that was made in 1991. And, you know, I mean, you don't know what's going on with this stuff when you're just buying it, when you're unaware. But now when you look at it, you can see all these Illuminati satanic symbols. It's all over this album cover and it shows you he was a part of it you can see the uh, the all-seeing eye right here okay right over here it's kind of hard to see number four it's the bathroom we know the bathroom it is uh one of the most demonic uh statues and symbols used in satanism saying he's looking down upon his work this the bathroom it has a goat head with horns the uh the pentagram on it, and even that is a male goat with female breasts to represent um, bisexuality. And the, that statue was also standing in Arkansas next to this ten, the Ten Commandments with uh, two little children standing next to it to represent pedophilia. Uh, and then you have number five, uh, number five right here, which is an alien. And uh, it talks about the alien hidden within the animal kingdom, Illuminati, Illuminati bloodlines descended from aliens. And I just explained about aliens with, uh, with Lil Wayne and their ties to the Illuminati. And Michael Jackson has all these symbols right here on it. And uh, what's the other one that I wanted to share real quick? Uh, the, you have the Eye of Horus on here, um, an Egyptian, uh, there was an Egyptian child on here uh, holding a skull of a dragon, impressing upon the viewer that the Illuminati had been here since antiquity and even controlled the children. Pretty interesting and scary at the same time, and we know... Well, people speculate that Michael Jackson wanted to speak out against the Illuminati, which is part of the reason why they say he was uh, he was taken. Um, 
Eminem and his Eight Mile song, and I used to listen to Eminem too before I threw away all my music. And he he openly said this. He said he sold his soul to the devil. He can never get it back. He just wants to leave the game level head intact. He willingly he willingly said it said it openly to everybody that's listening to it. I don't think anybody ever caught it. Tribe Called Quest, DMX, Kanye West, all these others said the same thing. It's hidden messages in plain sight. Jack Black, an actor who was very popular and famous, he was on a talk show paying homage to the demonic roots of rock and roll, even mentioning Robert Johnson, who I will explain a little later on in this broadcast, who was a founder of it by selling his soul. But Jack Black said there is a rich history with the devil and rock and roll all the way back to Elvis saying he's playing the devil's music and then he says we sold our soul to the devil question mark well how do you explain us being here on stage with you right now openly admitting it Katy Perry said she was a gospel singer at 15 years old and both her parents were traveling ministers but she decided to sell her soul Kanye West calls himself Yeezus, and on his album cover of him sitting next to Satan with demons in the background, I mean, just open. And you know, Yeezus is a play on the name Jesus, obviously. Marilyn Manson has a song called The Antichrist Superstar. You have a group out there called Black Sabbath. I mean, that one's right in your face. The Sabbath day is Yahweh's holy day set apart. It's time between he and his believers, the fourth commandment. What's so dark about it? Nothing. It's a day of enjoyment, a day of delight. And you have a group called Black Sabbath right in your face. Hova has a play on one of the names that the world calls um, Yahweh Jehovah, although his name is Yahweh. Uh, that's Jehovah's rendered from Yahweh. Then you have 3-6 Mafia. When you look at that word, plainly you get 666. Ariana Grande has a song titled God is a Woman pure blasphemy when we know that uh, Yahweh created Adam in his own image. And man, Satan wants to put doubt into your, to your minds. And that song by Ariana Grande was up for Grammy. So that means that people were supporting this music and the fallen prey to it. And that, that article was written on December 11, 2018. So that's recently. Okay. Britney, song, Britney Spears has a song called I'm a Slave. And when that song is played in reverse, she's pretty much saying that she's a slave for Satan. So in other words, what I'm saying is you are inviting evil spirits into your souls. And you can see that how uh, you can see that we was subliminally bring darkness messages and things like that into your soul. The words being said underneath the music, although you cannot hear them. They are destroying your soul on the inside, and we must repent, repent to Yahweh. Satan is clever at what he does. Think about this. He's been doing that since he fell from heaven, okay? He's had thousands of years to do this. He's advanced. So we have to be on our game and stay into the, have on the whole armor of Yahweh. If you don't have on the whole armor of Yahweh, that allows for him to get a foothold into your life. That's why Yahweh's word is the truth. Why Yeshua says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. What is the truth? What is the truth? Psalms 119, verse 142. The truth is the Torah, the law. The law is the truth. Even centuries ago, a guy named Giuseppe Tartini has a violin, violin piece titled the Devil's Trill Sonata. Just right in your face. The Devil's Trill Sonata. He says that a dark figure in a dream one night in 1713, which was the devil offering his services in exchange for his soul. Tartini agreed. The devil then picked up his violin and played the most beautiful song he ever heard. Tartini then awoke and played the song and even to this day, it is one of the most difficult pieces of violin music ever written. People say he must have had 
otherworldly assistance to have played it so perfectly. Hmm. Satan was the chief musician in heaven, of course. He just offered his services. Of course he had otherworldly assistance. David Bowie, a famous rock and roll musician, said rock has always been the devil's music. This is, I mean, a musician of rock and roll is saying this. Rock has always been the devil's music. You can't convince me that it isn't. The sad part is that Satan has the whole world desensitized to sin and his own existence. These artists and actors openly admit that they serve Satan and the audience burst out into laughter and they think it's a joke. Ha, 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 that can't be real. But they're telling you the truth right in plain sight. This is exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to keep walking down this dark path, Okay. The other thing I want to ask is alter egos or demons. Alter egos or demons. These artists claim to have alter egos, which is nothing more than demonic possessions. Okay. Beyonce admitted that she has an alter ego called Sasha, Sasha Fierce that takes over her on stage and has her doing things that she could never do without it. I remember in one of the um, the interviews, she said that she opened up her arms and that was the first time she ever felt something come into her. Well, there's the Sasha Fierce. It's not an alter, not an alter ego. It's demonic possession. Eminem has Slim Shady. And think about all these evil things that he starts saying and all that. Um, he wants to kill his own, own mom and, and girlfriend and all that at the time. Nicki Minaj is Roman. Uh, Rihanna has her own. Okay. Eminem even had a song titled Rap God. But him putting up the devil horns. Earth, Wind, and Fire said they, they were visited by Jupiter for the inspiration for the music. And that's another one. If you watch Watchmen Yahoo's uh, Musical Prophet videos, you'll see that. The guy, what's his name? Maurice White, the, the writer for the music. He said that they got all the inspiration from a pagan deity named Jupiter. Wow, who would visit them? That's nothing more than the worship of the sun god, the sun, the sun Elohim, who was Baal, Nimrod. Even halftime shows at sporting events are filled with occult symbols that are right in your face. They openly tell us who they worship. Therefore, we as believers cannot be involved with this secular music or this world. Music is not innocent because there is a, a spiritual side to this whole situation. We must not get involved with any of it, okay? Now, some background. How did Satan infiltrate the rock slash blues industry? There is something called the crossroads, which dates back to the blues era, where musicians would go to a crossroads and call on Satan to help them gain a musical talent for fame. Okay, but of course, it was required for their soul in exchange for his services. Remember, he told Yeshua, bow down before me. I give you all that you see here. The same thing he off offers to uh, the children of Yahweh today. Sometime in the 1930s, a man on a plantation in Mississippi named Robert Johnson, who wanted to become a blues musician. However, he could not play the guitar or sing. One day, voices told him to grab his guitar and run to the nearby crossroads at midnight and wait. These crossroads, according to those familiar with this, say it is U.S. 61 and U.S. 49 in Clarksdale. Johnson listened to the voices and went to the crossroads and waited. There, a tall, dark man emerged from the shadows and took Johnson's guitar, tuned it, and then expertly played a few songs and gave it back to Johnson. Johnson went on to play and found that he was a master on the guitar. So, so good, in fact, that he went on to invent the blues. Johnson made songs titled Me and the Devil. I mean, look at that, right in your face. Me and the Devil's Blues. 
hell bound on my trail. Wow, right in your face, Mr. Johnson. The legend says selling your soul at the crossroads was born in Mississippi, and its 29 songs went on to influence these popular rock or musicians to this day. Eric Clapton, Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, Black Sabbath, U2, Led Zeppelin, and some future artists all make reference to the crossroads. Now, I'm going to tie this in because this immediately reminded me of a rap group that I listened to as a teenager called Bone Thugs and Harmony. I know many are familiar with it. And remember, Bone Thugs and Harmony had a song called The Crossroads, where they sing, meet you at the crossroads where you will never be lonely. Now, growing up, I know what and who they were, were referring to, no other than Satan. Okay, in other words, it's saying you'll never be lonely if you sell your soul at the crossroads. I mean, a subliminal message, though, but it was right in your face, and I never saw it as a teenager. It's no coincidence at that time of my teenage life that my dad just happened to come downstairs while I was watching that music video and saw this video with all the death angels and everything. And he said, that's a demonic song. Turn that off. I now know that Yeshua HaMashiach, my Messiah, was speaking through my dad at that time to tell him, to tell me to turn that music off. It's amazing how, it's amazing how you see Yeshua's fingerprints on your life when you don't even know it as you know at the time. But if you go back and look at it, you say, wow, he was with me that entire time. He had so much mercy on me while I was watching sin and this demonic stuff. That he was so merciful that he didn't turn away from me. He was leading me to the righteous path to be, to be able to speak out against it to this day. Elohim of Israel, you are so awesome. Thank you. Bob Dylan conducted a live interview where he admits to selling his soul at the crossroads to Satan. This is Bob Dylan. He says, I made a bargain a long time ago. I'm holding up my end of the bargain. The interviewer asked Dylan, he says, what was the bargain? Dylan replies to get to where I am now. The interviewer says, who was the bargain with? Dylan says, the chief commander of this world and a world we cannot see. Chief commander of this world. Remember, Satan is the Elohim of this world. That's what he just said in another form. Of a world that we cannot see. So the Bob, Dylan, Bob Dylan willingly admitted the way he got his inspiration from and what he had to do to become popular and famous. The weekend was shown in one of his videos, symbolically showing that he followed his predecessors by selling his soul at the crossroads. In the video, oh uh, my bro in a video my brother showed me of the weekend performing on stage, and in the screen, there's a in the background, but when he was performing on stage. Flash the name Satan, but it flashed so fast that you would miss it with the naked eye, okay? So the guy that recorded the video, he slowed the video down for all of us to see, okay? And after when he slowed the video down, he paused and you could see the name Satan in the background. But if you just watch the video, you wouldn't even see it because it's just flashing. You just see lights flashing. So he's doing it right in your face, but he's doing it in a way that you can't see it sometimes. That's, that's, that's what subliminal is. My sister pointed out a video years ago of the weekend um, saying that he was on the stage singing, but nobody in the crowd was dancing. Nobody was paying him any mind as he was singing in this video. But then a dark figure walks into the room smoking a cigar. He watches him. Then he flicks a cigar on the stage, setting it on fire. Immediately, the crowd goes wild, and the dark figure, the dark figure was sitting, that, put it this way, the dark figure that was sitting there was a representation of Satan, 
And after he sold his soul, which was the flames and everything, pretty much, pretty much representing what you were doing, the crowd then goes wild because he was nothing before he sold his soul. But after he sold his soul, then the crowd goes wild. Just subliminal messages that you'll miss just watching a music video, okay? Like I said, Satan's been doing this for a long time. Even the, the Romantics, the Romantics have a song or an album titled 6149, which is paying homage to the crossroads that I was telling you about where Robert Johnson sold his soul like Bob Dylan and others, okay? The number 6149 is that crossroads in, in uh, Tennessee, okay? Hiding in plain sight. And I'm going to share something else with you about Michael Jackson a lot of people don't know. Michael Jackson had that, that double album. I'm not sure if anybody remembers. It was called uh, The King of Pop, I want to say. It was, it was made in the 90s. And on the, uh, the first, the, it was a two-part CD. The first CD had all his greatest, greatest hits like uh, Thriller and Billie Jean and all those. But then the second album contained some other material. And he literally had a song called Money. He had a song called Money. Okay. And when you listen to those lyrics in that song called Money, Michael Jackson says, anything, anything for money, he will sell his soul. He said, I will die for you. I will die for you. He said he would even sell his soul to the devil. Straight quote from his song titled Money. Listen to it. Although I encourage you not to, but just so you'll know that I'm make, not making it up, listen to it. Everyone must be aware that Nicholas Shrek, who is a son of Anton LaVey, and Anton LaVey is the founder of the Church of Satan and the founder of the Satanic Bible. And check this out. He founded the Satanic Church in what year? 1966. 6-6. Is that a coincidence? Absolutely not. But both of them admitted to using music and symbolism as propaganda and as a weapon against the youth to turn them away from our Messiah Yeshua and his kingdom. Listen to that. The Church of Satan and the founders willingly admit that they want to get the, the, the youth so engaged in music to turn, turn them away from Yeshua and his kingdom. They are hoping that you will never find the truth. They are hoping that you will continue to listen to these music, this music with subliminal messages that you have to play in reverse, that these people have signed their blood and contract because their life is in the blood on the contract and saying Yahweh's prayer backwards, that they are feeding your music with trash and grieving the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, they're hoping that you will never find this out, and that they will continue to have your child listen to this because you think it's innocent, and that they will grow up and never turn away from it so that they'll never find Yeshua. That's how demonic they are. You also have musicians and, and celebrities doing spirit cooking and all this other trash by taking bloodbath and mixing it with breast milk and sperm and... And, and, and blood and menstrual blood and laying in a tub with it with all of this nonsense and then they're writing it on the walls. It's just total perversion. Music is used as a seductive tool to innocently trick the world into serving Satan. But we are not going to allow that to happen. We need to stay away from all of the secular music, okay, so that Satan cannot get a foothold in your life. All he needs is an entranceway, and he will torment you, okay? Remember, a little bit of yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. That's Galatians 5, 9. Once you allow a little bit of sin to creep in, a little bit of lie, it leavens the whole batch, okay? Um, just think about how when Joshua went up to fight and a guy named Akon took took the unclean, cursed thing and hid it in his camp, okay? And they could not stand before the enemies because they had an unclean thing, a cursed image. And Joshua was like, pray to Yahweh, he said, why are we being destroyed? You promised me that we would be able to take this land. Why are we, why are we being destroyed? 
And Yahweh said, because one among you has an accursed, accursed thing, therefore you cannot stand among your enemy unless you take that accursed thing and destroy it. So one thing, one little bit of sin in your life can stop you from getting all of your spiritual blessings. And Satan wants that to happen in your life. So burn your satanic music ASAP. If you don't love the things of this world, then letting go of secular music should not be a problem for you. If it doesn't exalt Yahweh and His Son Yeshua, then throw it away. It shouldn't be a problem. Satan wants you to hold on to these things. He wants you to say, but I spent so much money in all these CDs and everything. I, I, I love this music so much. It's innocent. Yeshua wouldn't mind. I tell you today, throw it away. Stop supporting it. And let's stand up and fight for our Elohim of Israel in truth, okay? Yahweh says, tear down these altars and idols and groves and throw them into the fire, okay? And we can do the same thing today with our albums and CDs and our, our movies and all of these things that don't exalt our Father Yahweh, all these books and everything. Take them today and burn them in the fire, okay? Follow Yeshua in truth and let him, let his light shine upon you, okay? I pray that this video has been a blessing to you. And I pray that you will subscribe and share this video with your family or friends or anybody who is unaware of what's going on, okay? I encourage you, okay? We have to stand up in truth as fellow brothers and sisters in Yeshua, okay? Again, I thank you all for joining in. May our Father Yahweh uh, Barak and bless you in the name of Yeshua. Thank you.